I am Thomas Munise, that's how I prefer to be called. I am one of those guys who believed hygienically I was okay and I wouldn't be infected in any way. So that means HIV and AIDS was something I wouldn't even focus or look at or believe it would actually, I could actually contract. Yeah. How I contracted, that one is still a big question for me and most of us. But I would uh, like to say, knowing my status of which I was, I was diagnosed in South Africa. I did uh, what they call ELISA. And what had led me there was chronic, chronic, chronic TB. So that's when I realized that uh, there's something wrong. Given also the background that my own sister is a medical doctor, she was behind it. She made sure that I got the perfect tests because she wanted to give a proper prescription for me. And uh, that led to the news I never wanted to hear. And it was a battle of emotions and all you can <laughs> tell uh, in those years. But you know, there wasn't counseling that much in those years. And counseling was based or directed to other ailments. Uh, well, stroke, uh, sugar, or any other debilitating disease of the day. But per HIV, nobody really wanted to be directly uh, pointed towards HIV and AIDS. And everybody, especially the medical uh, fraternity, everybody was <laughs> running for their life. The minute they learned, you were <laughs> zero positive. Le <laughs> Mega <laughs> Bahono <laughs> I was born with HIV and uh, I grew up as a sick person. Uh, I was delayed to be enrolled in treatment because back times, back in those times, people were, were only diagnosed with uh, little il illnesses, uh, you know, Every time when I went to the clinic, there were no services for uh, HTS. So until 2007, when uh, I was tested and I tested positive, I was enrolled on treatment at uh, Baylor College of Medicine, Maseru Butabelo, as one of the children clinic in Lesotho, supported by PEPFA. 
Uh, I started my journey there as a child and I benefited so much. Uh, Baylor working in collaboration with Center Valley, they had a children camp of people living with HIV. So my first camp was in 2009. And uh, from 2009, uh, uh, it was not easy for me to disclose my status that time because I met so many challenges, especially challenges regarding community, challenges regarding uh, school, challenges regarding uh, my family at large. Kelemo <laughs> Banikena <laughs> Empahura 2016 I learned about PrEP in 2018, around September, if not August. And immediately after I learned about PrEP, I felt that it's something that should have been here a long time ago because it helps us, not only helps us, but it protects us. We never know challenges that we may come across as young girls. The lifestyles that we live, I mean, we go to parties, meet young and old people there, especially old people. And when you meet an old person who's willing to buy you chains and sleep with you, you're not exactly in a position to negotiate a condom. So I felt that PrEP is the answer to like a lot of problems concerning HIV for us young girls. A lot of girls are actually happy to take PrEP. They tell stories after they take PrEP that, okay, this has really helped me a lot because now I can, you know, live a lifestyle that I live, but I feel protected. So I think the biggest achievement is the positive outcome. Sukumhal 
ho tlota ke se letsa ba sotoka taba tsa thibelo tshwetso go tlwa go mmaho ya onsela ha ke ha ke tlang ka di kagolo ho ho interviewa le taba tsa mofuta o nono me ke le ka ba le hlonela ho ke ke khahle mahlo a be ba ka ba experience e bile en ntle ka nnete ho tla 2010 ho fihlele tsa jwale ho bane ho bane ke qadile pele ke se bona tsa facility ne ke le ment ho mother e based on at facility level s jwale e ho no le thata nyana qalong ho ya makabela se chava sa ba sotlhoge he la mbonne ha ka yeng se bete ko kona hlo kwena ntshaiwe ka 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 ifenya ka paka ka ihlola ho no ba tla ho le thata but a itse ha ke elelwa ke le motho ge ba elelwa bo bo hlokwa ba gona ba elelwa le ho ja tshenka ge ntse na di challenge mo na le mane tsa ho ge la ho ka ba e monono wa ge ke phela ko kona hlo ka e tshaiwe hlola ba ga really na u bua nete motho eh eh but ha o vitlele tsa ha jo le ka nete ke mo sebetse ona le bona le tso ha hole jwa le hone tshe nthle se tsa community mo hlileng ke tlwang mo sebetse wa ka ka kotlo ko tlwa ka tlong haka mo ke dula tshe le ke lo kokotela ba khatshane bana ba tsotse bana ba le ke dula fatse tla sa mo kotwa se fatse ba le ke dula ka ditaba tsa bophela so ntho tla ntho tsa lang go gore facility challenge go gore e mole mole mo tatile wa tla go bona gona o thuswa ka o fuma ne tsheletso neng ka e mang ka mang ka mang go gore ba ba tla sa khatello ye nwa go ge ba tle di tshebeletso e mpha ka ba fuma na mang malapeng a bona ke ba melo go ihle ba khona go ba phuthulo ye ba le ka ne ba bona ba khona go ba beteng ke bua ka ditaba tsa na tsa bophela mehle go na le bona le tso e golo I met Dreams um, two years back, that is 2016. Uh, Dreams is a 10 country initiative that aims to reduce new HIV infections among adolescent girls and young women by 40%. Well, before I met Dreams, um, I was start by saying I wasn't studying. I wasn't at school because my parents couldn't afford to take me to school. Well, I had to drop off school when I was doing Form 5 because they couldn't pay for the fees, the exam fee, the school fees and everything. So I had to drop off the school. And since I'm the only one who can, who, who can bring the income in the house, I had to do anything to bring what we can eat, what we can have, so that we can bath, do everything, like everything in the house. Uh, I had to, to look for places or many guys that would give me what I, I want so that I could be like any other girl, like any, any student, any kid. I met the blessers by, by then and we carried on with this thing. They could, they made me like, they made me feel good, feel like, feel good actually. And one, when 20, in 2016, I met Trims. And when I heard of this Trims project, I saw, and I, I didn't know even my dream, what my dream was, was. But when this dream thing came, I just, thought of myself that hey, this thing might be the important thing and I joined the dreams I was told so many important things that I saw that hi I just lost the road I was just in the wrong road and dreams since dreams stands for determined resilient empowered mentored it's being safe I, I saw that I wasn't safe I wasn't determined I didn't know my dream and I came back and said no this is what's not in Tabele. The new Tabele is here. Who's going to be determined? Who's going to be safe? My journey has been a very interesting and enlightening one. Um, I started off as a rookie like all of us um, as an entertainment journalist until 2014 when the United States um, or the US Embassy took me to to the US um, for an um, international visitors leadership program where I engaged with um, 
uh, people who were in high rank and who had experience in media, I mean, I'm talking about editors and senior reporters, people who, who covered serious stuff like politics and health, people who, who edited and, and were, in ta were in charge of, of their media houses. And at the time, I was still, <coughs> I was still a junior reporter reporting solely on, on entertainment issues. So my exposure to the different passions that people have on, on um, journalism and people from different, um, different countries, and I'm not only talking about African countries, I'm talking about, uh, I think we're about 99 journalists. So I, I really, really learned a lot there, and that's when um, that little flame or the little spark that I have for journalism really was, was ignited. And coming back home, um, I took a decision that it is time to take my career to the next step. And I approached my editor and I asked him to help me write social issues. And obviously the, the best way you can do that is by covering feature stories and that's when I I started um, writing on gender, gender, uh, gender issues, ch uh, children issues, and then health issues. My name is Tampa Semutoping. I'm the executive director of the People's Matrix Association and I'm the 2014 Yale alumni and I've been working um, for the organization since 20, 2009. Our organization um, works in creating an enabling environment for the LGBTI people or people with diverse sexual orientation, gender identities and gender expressions to freely enjoy their rights in the country and um, contribute meaningfully to the um, political, economical and social development of the country. So it's about just creating an enabling environment for people. Before Pepfa uh, decided to help us uh, open the male side and the female side, we were having a great challenge that uh, we were accessing Bombe and when we requested Bondate to come through indexing, they were not coming and when we requ requested the adolescent to come through the indexing, they were not coming. So now that we have a specified department that uh, just for male side, Bonda they seems to enjoy the service. They seems to tell everyone about the uh, the importance of coming, and we see the number of Bonda day increasing daily, daily and daily. So we, we enjoyed that effort that Pepha uh, make us aware that if you can just open the mill site, that is when we are going to perform very well. So we realize that we are doing very well in 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 mill site, even in adolescent. Now these adolescents are no longer being discriminated. They are just of the same age. They are accessing friendly services. We are being offered by the adolescent. We see them also enjoying and it increases the number of uh, people we are catching who are HIV infected. And also we are able to uh, increase those that are on treatment and as well as we are still following to ensure that they are, they are uh, virally, they are being virally suppressed. So we are saying PEPFA has done a great job by helping us open those uh, department. So we are complimenting it for that. I really do, uh, to, uh, do appreciate what the, uh, the, the, the PEPFA has been doing and continues to do. And I, I wouldn't want it to stop at the moment because now people are really uh, taking treatment. As the country we have been battling with the coordination among within the HIV programming but now PEPFA has, has been um, working hard to uplift and also to make sure that um, the HIV response is it has uh, more impact within the country itself and also I think what I love about 
HEPFA programs is um, that they are, they are people-centered. Um, yes, it's a, a funding from the U.S., but then when, when it comes to the, to the, to the country, it's, it's all, the ownership is of the civil society, it's of um, the people within the, the structure. For a journalist to, to effectively execute uh, their work, they need information. And information regarding uh, issues of HIV w through PEPFA easily accessible. I'm, I'm really honored that dreams came to my life. I don't even I don't have even have my enough words to express how 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 happy I am. How incredible this dreams project is to, to our lives. It has changed me a lot, and I'm so I'm really really feeling honored with it. about the PEPRA program in Lesotho, it's really working because it's not just offering the services of, uh, of HIV and AIDS epidemic. It's also offering the services of psychosocial support, especially to us people living with HIV.